the Archdiocese of Toronto, and the National Catholic Broadcasting Council. Through the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, presents Sunday TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Welcome to the celebration of this televised Mass on this 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Anne-Marie LeBlanc from Moncton, New Brunswick. This Mass is being offered in thanksgiving for blessings received, for the intentions of her children, and for the deceased, her deceased husband, family, and friends. Our thanks go out to Anne-Marie LeBlanc for the gift of televising this Mass to the faithful of Canada and across the world. And now, as we celebrate this Eucharist on this Thanksgiving weekend, we ask the Lord to make us truly grateful for all the blessings that God has given us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise God as we say, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and governs with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people. He will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation, for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The Lord 
Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. My God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in the glory in Jesus Christ. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, enlighten the eyes of our hearts, that we may know the hope to which we are called. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and Pharisees in parables. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Look, those who have been invited, look, I have prepared a dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burnt their city. 
Then he sent his slaves. The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Tables of plenty, rich food and flowing wine. For me, it's a cholesterol time bomb. Here is a lavish meal, both from Isaiah chapter 25 and from the gospel today. And it is very coincidental and very happy coincidence that we in Canada are celebrating Thanksgiving weekend this weekend. <clears throat> when I was up in Thunder Bay, traditionally we would have a big banquet for the homeless and for those who lived in the streets. And there would be about 150 of them, turkey dinner with cranberry sauce and followed with loads of mashed potatoes or yam, and then an apple pie with cheese or a pumpkin pie. But it was also an ethnic community of Portuguese and Italian and Polish and Finnish people. And so we could have meals with osabuco and uh, pierogies and Finnish meatballs and washed down with grappa. Now, lest your mind keep on going on with the Thanksgiving meal that you're going to have later on today, let us get back to Isaiah. Isaiah 25 is a meal that has been spread out for the people of the Lord. It is a metaphor for heaven. And we enjoy this metaphor because Jesus continued to increase that metaphor, embellish that metaphor, uh, draw out that metaphor, especially at the Last Supper, when he said, <clears throat> with great desire, I have longed to eat this meal with you in Luke chapter 22. And at that longing, that continues not only from the Last Supper, but to all of us even till today. And you and I, during this COVID-19, can experience that same longing that Jesus had, a longing to eat with his friends. We long to eat with our loved ones, with our children and our grandchildren. But because of COVID-19, I do not know what it is going to be today. We'd feed the little children, and then we'd spend time around the table talking about the good old times. For the last 65 years, my family has been gathering in Grimsby precisely to celebrate this, you, this meal. Whenever I could, I'd come up from Guyana, and I'd celebrate Mass. And there were three or four things we always did. First, I anointed all those who were sick within the family. Now, this was only cousins and their spouses, uncles and aunts, and we numbered 140. Then I would light candles for all those who had died in the last year. And finally, we would celebrate babies who were born. Forty years ago, there were so many babies that are born. Nowadays and tonight, when I celebrate this Thanksgiving with the family, we'll probably be lighting many candles for those who have gone before us. But it is a time to give thanks to God for all God's abundance and all the God's goodness to all of us. It was a time also to reconcile with the rest of the family members. <clears throat> During the year, we'd hurt one another with harsh words, or we'd forget to invite them for a birthday party or for a celebration, and people would feel that. And it was a time, Thanksgiving, to be reconciled. But most especially, to thank God for God's lavishness. Which brings us to the letter of Paul to the Philippians. In this letter, he's thanking the people of Philippi for the generosity towards them. And he says, there were times when I had plenty and there were times I had little. There was a time when I ate well and there was a time when I was hungry. There was a time when I had an abundance and there was a time when I craved for everything that we needed. How many of us can relate to that even today? During this pandemic, we have 
Many of us have lost jobs. Small businesses have got out of business. And the rents to be paid, there's hydro and the telephone bills to be paid. We can experience within us that time like St. Paul did in that letter to the Philippians. But we also knew that God was with us. And so when there were difficult times, we realized that God loved us and it was shown in the way our parents and our grandparents loved us. Which brings us to the gospel today. There are three levels to that gospel. The one, the invitation of God to all of us. Another metaphor for heaven. My wedding banquet has been, uh, the supper is ready. Go out and call them. And then as the Christian community grew, there was another level to that. And another level to that was the chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. They did not accept the invitation. And so God would say, I'm not going to force you. I'm inviting you. There's no coercion. But since you have been found unworthy, there is not going to be a second invitation. Go out into the highways and byways and bring everybody in. And so you and I today in 2020 have been brought to the table of the Lord. We can come to it with thanksgiving for the goodness of God. And this has been ratified with the life and death of Jesus Christ. And he too calls us. He says, I've gone before you to prepare a place for you. What a beautiful suggestion for an invitation. Hopefully we will receive it with grateful hearts. God bless you all. Let us now pray together. For the church, a community committed to faith and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the civil leaders in our country called to, be, called to effective action on behalf of the poor and the marginalized, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor suffering as a result of COVID-19, for small businesses that have, have been losing uh, their inventory, for those finding it difficult to pay their rents or to put food on the table, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of our sponsor, Anne-Marie LeBlanc, for her family and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this Thanksgiving weekend, we thank you, Lord, for your generosity to us Help us to have grateful hearts and to spread this gratitude to those around us through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this wine and water, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness, we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <coughs> Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, most holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us a Redeemer, 
to live like us in all things but sin, so that you may love in us what you loved in Jesus Christ, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and this entire people of God. <clears throat> Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Jean de Brebeuf, Saint Isaac Jogues, and our Canadian martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom and the, the power, power, and the glory are yours now and, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of this your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. And wherever you are, let us exchange a sign of peace and thanks on this Thanksgiving weekend. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. With those of you at home, join with me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so may we make, make us sharers of his divine nature. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go now in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you're interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details. For the plowing, sowing, reaping, silent growth, while we are sleeping, future needs.